In this video, I'm going to take a quick tour of a brand new Jetpack Compose project. So first of all, we have our app module, which you see that lines up with app here, which is where we can go to debug or run our project. One thing we'll see immediately is manifest and then Android manifest.xml. This is a configuration file for your application. Now, it used to have a lot more stuff in it, but now some of the stuff that used to be in this Android manifest is now actually in the build.gradle script you'll see under the app module as well. But nonetheless, the Android manifest is still important. It tells us certain things like our package name, which, oh, by the way, is also in the build.gradle. We'll see application ID is the same thing as the package name. We can also see certain information about the application, like its launch icon and uh, other assets that come together to make that launch icon. Now, here's a really important part of the Android manifest. You'll see an activity identified here, and we will want to define our activities in the, in the Android manifest. So in, a, in an older manifest or in a in manifest for an existing project, you're likely to see multiple of these activities. But what sets this one apart is this thing called intent filter. And you see that the action is set to main and the category is set to launcher. That means when a user double taps on the app icon, this is the specific activity that will be launched. And this one is called main activity. So let's find main activity. If we navigate to the Java folder, and remember Kotlin compiles to bytecode like Java, and Java was our initial language for programming Android. So that's a little leftover there is having this Java folder. But nonetheless, if we navigate to the Java folder, and then we navigate to the package com.myplantdiary, in this case, v32001, just as we see here, you're going to see something called mainactivity.kt for Kotlin. And sure enough, that matches up to this main activity. Now, this is a compose application, which means that we put the layout together programmatically with a series of functions that have the composable annotation on the top. So in a compose application, we'll have maybe one or maybe just a small handful of activities where older applications would have a concept of activity and fragment. So basically the Android manifest points us to this activity and because we're doing compose or using compose, we can put a whole lot of our UI logic into this activity and this will essentially be that activity that the user will see when launching the app. Think carefully about what you want to do in that activity. More than likely, you want to take the user right into the action with minimal clicks, preferably zero clicks. Take the user right to what they want to see in your application. Now, a few other things that we'll see here. We see there's a My Plant Diary theme. And if we take a look at this UI theme, there are some Kotlin classes that define certain things like colors and also the rounded corners for shape. And then they put this all together in a theme class. And you see that there's a dark colors theme and a light colors theme, or a dark colors palette and a light colors palette. And that's for dark mode and light mode. So very easy to support both of those modes in our application. And then type, that contains our typography, or in other words, our font. So for a very basic Compose application, these are the folders that are most important to know. Now, if we take a look at uh, a couple of folders with similar names, we see com.myplantdiary.v32001. You see something called Android test and something called test. Pay very close attention to what's in the parentheses after this package name, because you see, it looks like these are three identical packages, but indeed there is a subtle difference. Let's start with one called test, and here we have a sample unit test. If you look at this, you don't, don't see anything that is Android specific. And this is an ideal unit test, that is simply testing Kotlin logic directly without having to worry about the Android operating system. Now, if we take a look at example instrumented test, we see something else. There's a function use app context, and we have this concept of app context. This is going to tell us a little bit about the application, and it's going to give us accessibility to certain Android specific features. So if we have a unit test that needs to know about the Android manifest, 
Let's use this example instrumented test style here, which is under the Android test folder. Now, you don't necessarily have to use this exact same file. This is just a sample. You could make a brand new uh, Kotlin file or Kotlin class to do your test. Just know that if you want to access anything Android specific, put it under the Android test environment. In other words, put it under the test environment. Now we navigate from there, Java generated, you're not likely going to need anything in there because by definition it is generated. Now res drawable, that tends to be where we put our image assets. MIP map tends to be our launcher icon. And then values is a good place for configuration. So you see strings.xml, this is a really important concept because with strings.xml and Android, you effectively define a key and then you put a translation associated with that key inside of the strings XML file. Now, why is that important? Because it makes internationalization very easy. You can make different string XML files for different languages that you wish to support. So you could have one for French, one for Spanish, so on and so forth. And then it will use the appropriate file based on the user's preferred language preference on the Android operating system. So in other words, you don't need to prompt the user and say, do you prefer English or Spanish? Android will automatically use the user's preferred language and then pick the strings XML file that's appropriate based on that language selection. A few other things we'll see here, a definition of some theme colors. We often use that in our, uh, in our XML based layout that preceded Jetpack Compose and then some themes for dark mode and light mode you see here theme.myplantdiary and if we go down here again you see theme.myplantdiary if we take a look back at that main activity from a moment ago you'll notice set content and then once again my plant diary theme now down below you'll see the gradle scripts there's one at the project level which you won't have to deal with a whole lot the one you have to deal with a lot more is this build.gradle at the app module layer, because this is where we do things like we say our SDK compile version, min SDK target version, and then several other options like our JVM target, our compose version we want to uh, apply to, and then probably one of the most important is the dependencies section. As you build a project, you're going to add libraries to it. And most of those libraries are going to go under dependencies. Now, it can be a little challenging to try to line up the correct library versions. So a lot of times we'll use this variable syntax here, where you see a dollar sign and then a variable. And that variable, in this case, compose, compose version, was defined somewhere up above, and we're simply reusing it. Compose version is a little tricky one because it's actually in that top level build.gradle. You'll see here there's ext and then compose underscore version 1.01. .01. So definitely a new version, a new technology that we're checking out. But nonetheless, you see that compose version with the underscore. If we go down to this build.gradle, simply preface that with a dollar sign and it becomes a variable. And now it's telling us to get Android X dot compose dot UI colon UI colon in this case 1.01 .01. and that's a common thread that's tying these five different imports together so if we want to increase our compose version in the future we simply increase this number right here and it automatically percolates throughout the entire project so we have a few other things that we don't generally need to deal with every day Gradle properties local properties notice here that local properties has an SDK directory that is specific to my computer or my hard drive. So that's not likely something we would push to GitHub. So let's take a look at our .gitignore file. And no surprise here, you notice that that one is included in our gitignore file, which means that it will not be pushed to GitHub. So several other things here are either specific to our computer or our compiled files or anything else like that. This file means we don't want to push it to GitHub. So that's a quick look at the basic structure of an Android Jetpack Compose application. As we build out this application, we'll find that we will have a lot more files, potentially a lot more packages, and a lot more different Kotlin classes and interfaces and the like, and libraries that we will use to put together our application. So I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you.